Doc, his heart rate's dropping. I'm not sure he's gonna make it. This is crazy. I've never seen such injuries from no touch whatsoever. Let me just grab his shoulders. Like, wake up. Just wake. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, now that was that was probably a bad idea. We are gathered here today, my friends, to remember a loved one. One that we had. I'm not being funny. I didn't even touch so that guy. Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here, and you are watching FTW. This, of course, is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, it's been a big week in the world of UFC as Scouse fighters Paddy Pimler and Molly McCann both won their fights at the O2. It's fucking when I saw that Merseysiders had been dishing out some beatings, my first thought was, oh no, Joey Barton's collected another case. But no, it was Paddy and Meatball Molly doing the the business again. Paddy celebrated his win over Jordan Levitt by teabagging him afterwards. We have a dramatic reconstruction here for you. Jordan's response though, it's fair to say he didn't take it well. <laughs> Your Thing is though, Paddy's a Liverpool fan as well, so in my opinion, that's three bonus points for us at the start of the season. On to the football though now, and it's been a stressful week for Chelsea fans, missing out on major signings and getting slapped up in pre-season. The Blues have now seen their fourth summer target join Barcelona, as Jules Koundé agreed personal terms with the Catalan side. This is getting out of control now, and here I was thinking that they can't do it for a fourth time. <laughs> Barca are copying their homework at this point. They're man marking Chelsea's transfer policy. Then we've got Barcelona negotiators to Chelsea scouts on whether to bid for players. If these men do it first, I'll do it. <laughs> and whilst Barca might have run out of W's for Lewandowski's shirt last week, Chelsea can't print off the Khalidou Koulibaly shirts because they've used all of their L's up already. I would not be surprised if we got a crazy Barca announcement this week. In a shock development, Barcelona announced the capture of Raheem Sterling just a matter of weeks after his move to Chelsea. They're getting linked with Leicester's Wesley Fofana and Barcelona are already liking it. If Chelsea made a bid for Ronaldo, within two business weeks he'd be suing at the new camp. To be fair, the number of people interested in Ronaldo or interested in a move to Chelsea is the exact same right now. Zero. Oh. In negotiations, they would reject each other. Poor Ron, man. This guy's getting no love, whoever he tries to join. Atletico Madrid fans brought a banner to their most recent preseason game saying they didn't want him. Diego Simeone is very pleased at this. It looks like he's going to be leaving United and there's going to be no more Sues in Manchester. My name's James and I'm addicted to sue. feel like uh, my life's gonna have a hole within it soon. Jesus Christ, I can't even avoid saying words that have sue in them. I sue at the shops. No. I sue in my sleep. Sue. And I even sue at funerals. He was a humble and noble man. Sue. Here we have him getting his first standing ovation from 2,750 fans at his new club, Solihull Moors. His LinkedIn page is going crazy right now, because the number of clubs he sent his CV to is getting out of hand. Probably around 95, 96, was it 94, 95, 96? No, 95, 96, I'd say, 97, around that. And with the amount of rejections he's getting, he's taking it out on poor new Manchester United signing Lisandro Martinez in the gym. But back to the Jules Koundé deal, and Barcelona are going to have a tough time explaining why the rest of the fee is in FIFA points next year. They'll be having a board meeting on whether to sign new players next week or actually pay their electricity bills. I'm not paying 13 quid. I feel like I'm talking about this every single week, you know, Barcelona and their finances, but it's actually insane at this point. They don't have money to pay their own players and they're buying new ones. Not a single one of their invoices has landed in the last three years. And yet Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is welcoming a 47th new sign into the training camp. <laughs> This is Barcelona if they played fantasy football. Because they're asking Frankie de Jong to take a 50% wage cut and make an effort for the club's vision. How about you make an effort in paying your taxes, lads? On the theme of Chelsea's rough week, though, and they were peppered 4-0 by Arsenal in pre-season. Fuck Chelsea. Chelsea's shit. Here we have Gabriel Jesus' as wine versus Raheem Sterling's. Khalidou Koulibaly's going to be in an absolute state seeing this defending. Then, upon wanting to go to Barcelona instead, is going to be in a state seeing 
their bank balance. Whilst it's only pre-season and we can't read into it too much, Thomas Tuchel's not going to be too happy seeing Edward Mendy concede four here. Is he a fucking space? He was actually asleep this time rather than last week. But you know what? I'm starting to realise why this has happened. Tuchel is losing on purpose so the board have to sign a new centre-back. It was all part of the master plan, wasn't it? Yeah. Here's Jorginho if he'd actually got a penalty 15 minutes into this one. Chelsea's players, though, are giving Tuchel a selection headache. And it's not a good one. Kai Havertz is out here doing bin challenges. Timo Werner's distracted by Jordan Pickford. Here we have Tuchel's speech to Timo at half-time during this game against Arsenal. You do seriously surprise me. Thank you, Cher. I, I was hoping you'd see that. I mean, I'd give it all I got. Give you 110. You surprise me how shit you are. Uh. But for Arsenal and what a performance. This is something for Gunners fans to be excited about. Until 27 minutes into the season and Granite Xhaka has received a red card. Aaron Ramsdale's already shithousing opposition fans. But for Arsenal supporters and they firmly believe in the process. To me, next season we can win the quadruple. People might laugh. Because On the theme of Arsenal and themselves as well as UK YouTube's very own KSI announced the drinks partnership with Prime this week. For those that don't know, this is the collaboration energy drink product of Logan Paul and KSI. And they're used to bottles at the Emirates, so this works well, really. To be honest, I'm loving this for KSI as an Arsenal fan. But also, I'm just loving the image of this all. Imagine at halftime and you look up to see Waterman on the screen. This drink is as close to a prime as Cedric Suarez is ever gonna get. And look, listen, whilst I'm excited for both of them, I don't know if you wanna see Logan Paul vlogging at the place, because we all know how that went last time. Listen, at least it's not Nottingham Forest that they've chosen to sponsor. But look, it's great that he's going to be getting into things here. I'm sure you'll be able to find him in the Emirates home and chanting about Tottenham. What do we think of Tottenham? Shit! What do we think of shit? Tottenham! Thank you! Tottenham! But if you thought it's been a big week for Arsenal, then ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the other side of North London as Tottenham won something. Do not scratch your eyes! Their trophy cabinet is looking healthy now. This preseason tournament is a big deal for Spurs. I mean, just look at Harry Kane. The guy's gassed at this win. He's not seen this much silverware since he last unpacked the dishwasher. Davinson Sanchez's interview at full time was heartfelt. First and foremost, yeah, I want to thank God. Because today he made the impossible possible. Amen. The Walter Toll Cup winners. You'll never sing that. And Tottenham probably won't either because no one can even remember what this trophy is called. On a serious level, I do think Tottenham will be serious challengers this year. Certainly to the top four. And you never know, they could even squeak into the top three as well, in my opinion. There's been some big wheelings and dealings in the Premier League in recent weeks. But one massive one at the bottom of the table is Nottingham Forest signing ex-Manchester United winger Jesse Lingard. David Moyes and the rest of the West Ham staff can't be happy with this one. Here we have the rest of the Forest squad seeing his wages in comparison to theirs. He's the most expensive thing in Nottingham right now and he was a free transfer. Make of that what you will. And look, he's multi-purpose as well. They can use him to distract the goalkeeper with dancing on game week one. They can use him for a little morale boost when they're 4-0 down at half time. Do you want me to wrap anyone? Lift a mood a bit. No. Here we have him trying to get back into the training complex after providing more expected TikToks than goal contributions. And the staff at the club will be even less impressed when they side at 8-1 down and Jesse starts dabbing after getting an 84th minute consolation goal. What are you doing? We're not doing the dance. We're not doing the... What are we doing? Now elsewhere and we witnessed a pre-season friendly between the giants of Spanish football. But a friendly version of El Clasico was never going to really be described as that. Down on the bench and Casemiro was raring to get involved in any sort of fracas. Antonio Rudiger and Roldo Raujo were firmly getting in each other's faces here. Rudiger's just a Chelsea fan still at heart and he's vexed that Barcelona stealing all their players. Former Leeds man Rafinha scored an absolute screamer as well in this one for Barca in his first game for the club. Even the goals in this game weren't friendly. This is a hate crime of a strike. Meanwhile, Robert Lewandowski, after all the hype of wearing the number 9 shirt, ended up appearing in a number 12 here. They're gonna have to reprint all the shirts. They're gonna run out of double use again. Elsewhere in pre-season, Liverpool played Leipzig and won 5-0, then played Salzburg and lost 1-0. In a four-day period featuring more Red Bull than a CEX lunch break, our pre-season story so far has been a mixed bag. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Meanwhile, Manchester City won versus 
Bayern Munich thanks to an Erling Haaland goal. Though I've got to say Manuel Neuer coming off for Riyad Mahrez took me by surprise. I'm not an expert, but I don't think that's a legal substitution. Over at Manchester United, and there's the news that Scott McTominay can't do around the world. The hand of God has never looked so Scottish. He's the first person to ever have a skill move ruled out. Over on Twitter, and Aston Villa's list of club fines were leaked. Getting fined for not bringing cakes on a birthday. Did Yaya Toure write this? Meanwhile, we've got Tyrone Mings' reaction to Stephen Gerrard here after finding out he's paying 100 quid for not bringing his flip-flops into the shower. You see you, you plumber from Liverpool. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay, all right. Deli Alley is firmly getting ready for the new season with Everton. They lost 4-0 to Minnesota United here in this one. They would go down in the MLS and they don't even have relegation in that league. There's the news that Chelsea centre-back Trevor Shalaba simply cannot do arithmetic. This man did maths until year three and then never did it again. Here we have him in a maths exam answering six plus seven as Bolivia. Meanwhile, James Madison got brave with Hamza Chowdhury, throwing him into the water here on Instagram. Get this man out of there quickly because that hair could soak up the entire pool. Meanwhile, one dad on TikTok is already getting involved in Project Mbappe. I'm going to pass you the pool. I need you to dribble through the cones, yeah? And then go over the hurdles after. All right, cool, go. Boski! Listen, this is poor form, honestly. This kid's getting a 4.5 rating. Get him off the field! And of course, we cannot forget the superhuman effort of England's Lionesses to reach the Women's Euros final after thumping Sweden 4-0. I've fallen them gas for the final. It's just a shame there's not the same level of enthusiasm from Sky. You know, it's all about the wing play for, for England and... Oh my god. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, what has happened? <laughs> now, upon arriving back at Juventus, and Paul Pogba is already facing a setback as he could be sidelined for months after picking up a meniscus injury in training. Season 2 of the Pogba entry is going to have about three minutes of actual game time in it. On his day, he's a great midfielder. It's just a shame that day is the 30th of February. At Roma, and one couple got engaged in front of Jose Mourinho. <laughs> This poor man has no idea what to do next. Yeah, so <clears throat> good on you, got training. So if you could just get out of here. Napoli manager Leonardo Spalletti caught a hat thrown at him from the crowd and wore it, only to realise it said porn up on the front. And speaking of Napoli, he got into an argument with his Nigerian striker, Victor Osimen, who was getting a little bit too lippy during a training session. He told his front man to go take an early shower. Listen, Victor, just make sure your flip-flops are on at all times. However, it's not quite as bad as Torino's boss and and sporting director getting into a physical scrap in the car park. Can't lie, this is gonna make the next board meeting a little bit tetchy. Right, so obviously Andrea Bellotti wants to leave. I need everyone's opinions on cashing in on- <laughs> Guys, come on, please. I've, we've got things to run here, if we could just- In France and PSG had a busy week facing Japanese opposition, though Neymar felt the need to dive to win a penalty in a meaningless game against Gamba Osaka. Kylian Mbappe witnessed the world of Japanese combat sport. And Lionel Messi rinsed the Narawa Red Wings defender so badly that the commentators physically laughed at him. <laughs> That's a shithousery award, unintentionally. I don't even care. Meanwhile, PSG's Arnaud Kalimwendo seems to be struggling with Japanese cuisine on how to eat it as Neymar filmed the youngster struggling to use chopsticks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's still gonna be having this meal in September. In Lille, we've got this shambles in defense. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure who to blame more. The man providing the back pass or the goalkeeper for dealing with it so badly. Meanwhile, at Lyon, and Alexander Lacazette has missed the game against Feyenoord after being attacked by wasps. How are you a professional footballer getting outpaced by insects? He's been gagan pressed by wasps and he's lost. His calves knew they did not have the qualifications to get away from that swarm as they saw it on the horizon. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. In Spain and Sevilla have started the new Kai Havertz bin challenge after the Germans missed last week. All they need to do is put a Europa League sticker on the bin and they're getting it in every single time. Here we have Ferrari's Formula One driver Carlos Sainz rejecting a Barcelona shirt. <laughs> Forza Barça. <laughs> 
Ferrari are an unserious organization, so do you know how bad you have to be for him to reject you? Meanwhile, in a friendly between Atletico Madrid and Numancia, one fan saw his opportunity to get a picture during a corner and did not pass up on it. In Germany, and one Mainz fan got a Lewandowski shirt printed to celebrate the pole no longer terrorizing his club in the Bundesliga. At least these lot have still got W's in their club shop. But now it's time for your goals of the week, and we've got some spicy ones this time around. First of all, at Wolves and through centre-back Max Kilman, whose dribbling capabilities, honestly, are far better than what you would expect as a centre-back. In Iceland, and Oliver Carl Finsson provided one of the most unique goals I've seen recently. With outrageous control to scoop it into the air, then bicycle kick it in. And finally, at Cerro Porteño, their fans couldn't have possibly imagined what experienced midfielder Carrizo would do once he picked up the ball on the halfway line after flicking it over a defender. At Trabs on Sport and during a friendly, one fan managed to get onto the pitch and try and take the ball off the opposition. I'm convinced Terry Maguire did this 12 months ago and nobody stopped him since. We've got a footballing themed gender reveal here. If I'm honest, I don't know what the answer is given it's ended up purple. Though seemingly, so is this grandma in the background. Hello all and welcome to The Beautiful Game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. Заголовков и под заголовков в обзоре этого матча будет немало. О, вот еще одна потом. And that concludes the beautiful game. Closer to home and we've got one of the most outrageous defensive mix-ups from Besiktas in their pre-season friendly against Wolves. It's not a huge amount better from Swansea defender Harry Darling against Charlton. Plus, I bet you weren't expecting to see American rapper Baby Keem playing a Stoke City on FIFA 15 career mode. Penalty! Penalty! Pin! Oh, handball too! Oh my god! One South End fan filmed himself going into the Leighton Orient club shop to buy a white t-shirt and use it as toilet roll. Leighton Orient then responded on Twitter asking him if the wife had left him and taken the kids. <laughs> Oh, house reward straight off the bat. In Denmark now, we've got the worst quality goal you're perhaps ever gonna see. Goodness. Up in Scotland and in Edinburgh, one stadium announcer was caught off guard when a penalty was ruled out and ordered to be retaken. Take that again because somebody's in. Fenerbahce lost in the final minute of a pre-season friendly to Ukrainian side Dinamo Kiev and their fans responded by chanting the name of Russian President Vladimir Putin to them. Seems a little bit excessive for a game of football in my opinion. What a day for Italian football. Euro 2020 champion. Yeah, that's all well and good, but let me tell you about Mussolini, bro. In Ecuador, one player for Independiente del Valle accidentally scored this goal. Valero, que tiene que regresar, regresar, exigido, exigido, exigido. Mira, pero... In the women's AFCON final between South Africa and Morocco, the referee signaling for four minutes somehow became nine minutes of additional time by the time the 90 minutes were up. Over in Brazil, and a team celebrating victory in a cup final managed to accidentally break the cup during celebrations. But don't fear, because Spider-Man was here to save the day. What is going on in Brazil? Finnish defender Robin Tihi provided an absolute disaster class against AIK in Sweden. Not not only scoring an own goal, but then being the reason for AIK's winner later on in the match. In Argentina, and Gimnasia managed to provide easily the best own goal of the week. In the moment of the campeonato, maybe the empate doesn't serve. Puso a correr a Palavecino. Uy, se dio corre y Salinas, gol! Goal! In Japan, we've got a very interesting corner routine going on here. So interesting that it distracted the taker from the rules of football as he then passed it to himself from the set play. In Slovakia, and Nikola Kerstovic upon scoring this weekend, celebrated by going over and lips in his girlfriend in the crowd. <laughs> Ah! 
I don't know who on earth picked the shirts for this game between Olympicos and Rio Norte, but even the referees wearing the same colour for crying out loud. In Argentina, and this is probably one of the more stonewall penalties you're gonna see given against San Telmo. I'm unsure as to what happened in this game involving Belgrano, but 29 minutes of additional time seems a little bit excessive here. This is the referee we needed at the end of this one. In Indonesia, in this pre-game routine, didn't exactly go to plan. And over at Atletico Morelia, a club in Mexico, they are probably one of the most passionate fans in world football after he got their club crest tattooed on the top of his head. Now that it's time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is the segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And this week, we've got the dream of every Sunday League player. Scoring a beautiful goal as it comes to you from outside of the area. Until you realise the fact that it didn't even go in in the first place. On to the weird stuff though now. Over in the wonderful footballing continent of Africa, Angola's under-17s were dishing out frying pans for players who won man of the match. In the Estonian Cup, and that tournament has once again delivered as Tomeka beat every FC transfer wise 18 nil there at Palmerias and one couple decided to get married in front of the club's mascots and finally in Spain Atletico Madrid B goalkeeper Antonio Gomez made his senior debut for the club in a pre-season friendly the difference was he was playing at centre back he came on with 14 minutes of the game to go in place of the injured Mario Hermoso and actually managed to keep a clean sheet despite being a goalkeeper playing outfield that though is gonna wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media, it is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.